three stories from my life, which has profoundly come to influence my view on education. The first story is about being a teacher. You know, the story starts with me and three friends of mine, Anand, Saurabh, and Pulkit. You know, after graduating from IITs, we went to this small place in Punjab called Barnala and started teaching the kids there. The reason we chose this small place was we really wanted to see whether quality teaching can create a difference, especially in that small place, which had no precedence and there was a huge issue of awareness with the children out there. We taught these kids in the next one year. We taught them for their competitive engineering exams. And what we saw really surprised us. From the very first year, we had 11 kids from that small group we taught. 11 kids went on and got selected in the top seven IITs. Now we really need to appreciate the fact that these were the kids who were left behind because all the brighter ones, all the cream was already gone to a bigger place in search of quality education. This experiment and this experience really reinforced the fact that quality teaching and quality teachers do create a difference. My next story is about entrepreneurship. So naturally, after having produced these results and seeing that benefit, we thought of scaling this concept up. You know, we imagined that if we can have a replication of that system, that would be great. So we went on and recruited more teachers, like-minded individuals. We started taking that from one small location to multiple locations, and we did that slowly and steadily over the next seven years. In the seven years, we introduced a lot of systems. Of course, when we had multiple uh, locations in order to ensure quality delivery across multiple channels, we introduced a lot of academic systems. We brought in standardized content, we brought in a standardized pedagogy for our teachers, and this we did in the last seven years. But slowly and steadily, we started observing a few trends. I would like to share those trends with you. Now, of course, because of these standardized stuff, teaching definitely graduated towards an extremely standardized bit, and it really helped us in scaling things up. But as a result, there were certain things others also which was happening. One of the foremost, we started seeing that the students started to lose interest who were actually so inquisitive before. And not just that, even the teachers, all of them we recruited, and by the way, they were great teachers, very motivated ones, they started to become monotonous. You know, they were very creative before. So obviously something was wrong here, right? In the seven years, we observed this trend consistently across our multiple locations. So we sat back, introspected, looked at, and what's really is happening here? There's something cooking. Some of the observations, and you know, as a retrospect, what we did was, we really observed this, that once initially it was just us teaching, you know, teaching was far more, you know, spontaneous. It was very free. But the moment we started introducing these systems and processes, the effectiveness faded. This began with an experiment, and it led us to question that, is putting academic systems and processes causing this? Is putting academic systems and processes in traditional education system wrong? And if it is wrong, what's the solution? How do you go about it? So this leads me to my third story, which is actually about an experiment we did. It was a very radical experiment in education, so I'll tell you about it. So what we did here was, the basic idea behind this experiment was, we really wanted to test this hypothesis that, can we break all traditional concepts of an institutional system and still ensure effective learning can happen? We used technology a lot here. We created an online platform. So you can imagine this like a, uh, a platform where completely devoid of any physical infrastructure. It was almost like a classroom on cloud kind of a model where we allowed all the students and the teachers to come together in an online platform and interact with each other. So of course to do that, we gave them, the teachers and the students both, live audio, video, technology tools. So this was more like both can look at each other, interact with each other, even write, collaborate with each other, all in real time. So we use technology a lot here. And, of course, the basic ethos was that we will not have a physical infrastructure classroom. So we broke that concept. So it was almost like, as I said, classroom on cloud. Not even with the infrastructure bit, we also took a radical step with the academic bit. So here, we had no academic system, nothing. All of our teachers were left free. You know, just be yourself, deliver in whichever manner you want. There was no academic check, no content standardization, nothing. What resulted was astounding. 
first and foremost, what we started seeing immediately was the teachers became very great. Suddenly, since there was no constraint, there was nothing to tell them that this is exactly how you will teach, they started understanding the student better, went to their level, and started delivering. So teaching was getting much more personalized as compared to the institutional model we had. But of course, our bigger concern still remained. The concern was of quality. Once you don't have all these systems, like a typical institute set up, how do you maintain quality? So here, we did a very interesting stuff. What we did was, we asked every student, after they are taking this session, to rate the teacher. Now, since this was online, we could manage that. So after every session which the student took, he would rate his teacher. We created a profile of a teacher, a public profile, where we, of course, the all basic info about his uh, qualifications, his years of experience was put. And also, we took this accumulated rating and pasted on this profile and made it public. It was a completely transparent system, which was open for all. What this resulted was truly astounding. Immediately, we saw the teacher, with this transparency kicking in, suddenly got a lot more sensitive. He took responsibility for his actions. So the issue of quality, which was there, suddenly disappeared. The teacher himself was taking responsibility. He himself used to design content according to the context of the child. And suddenly, he was responsible himself for the learning outcomes. This ensured the teacher was becoming more productive again, and the quality, we started seeing, in fact, better quality through this experiment. Now, of course, I'm not saying that all teachers were great. When we had a huge network of teachers, they were obviously great teachers, good ones, or not so good ones. But interestingly, this open transparency, this democracy, automatically started taking care of the quality. So what was happening is, basis the rating, the good teachers you know, stood out, and the not so good ones went to the bottom. So what we realized eventually was, by not having controls and systems, but by just taking a step back and opening things up, quality was improving, and this democracy itself was taking care of quality. Even from a student's perspective, this was great. Because now, student had more choice in the system. He's not stuck to the same pedagogy, same curriculum, same teacher. Here, if he is not finding a teacher to his comfort, he can anyways go back, basis the rating, he can choose a new teacher. The broader conclusion was that we felt this, and we substantiated with the data as well, that an institute, or for that matter, any system of education, instead of trying to control the academic system, trying to control the teachers, should in fact take a step back and really empower the teachers. That's the real solution. Instead of acting, trying to control quality by imposing all kind of systems, processes, standardizations, content, they should let democracy and transparency rule. And by this way, quality naturally improves. So the bigger culprit, ladies and gentlemen here, was the system of control. We really need to understand that teaching is not a batch process, like a manufacturing, you know, where you produce the same thing over and over and over again. No, systems and controls work best there when you have to have the same output. You can't imagine having that in you know, education. You can't have the same child getting produced over and over and over again. What really is the solution is to let, take a step back, and really give power back to the teachers. This brings me to my favorite topic, future of education. I get asked this a lot. What do you feel is the future of education? I'll answer this. According to me, I really believe that the future of education, decades from now, will definitely be much more open and much more democratized. It will not be confined to a physical location. I mean, decades from now, I mean, we can't imagine kids, hordes of them, wasting their time all accumulating in a four walls and studying as if teaching can only happen in those four walls and in those time. That's not going to happen. We will have a much more open environment where instead of an institute trying to control, it would be a lot more open and more choice will be given to not just students, but teachers as well. There will be choice to the students. He gets to learn whenever he wants, with whosoever he wants, and whatever he wants. And this choice will also be extended to the teachers. In fact, I truly believe that this choice will help us as a society attract more individuals towards teaching and create more teachers. This is, in fact, a little hypocritical. When I used to teach, I used to interact with all the parents, and I always used to ask them that, who you want as a teacher for your child? And the parents would like, oh, you know, the best teacher out there. 
I used to ask the same parent this question that when your child grows up, will you allow him to become a teacher? And he's like, nah, not done. This attitude has to change. I truly imagine a future where everyone is a teacher freely connecting to share knowledge. In fact, you know, I hear this a lot that we as a society don't have good teachers. There are no teachers. I don't see this. There are teachers everywhere. This room is full of teachers. All of us have something to share and teach. If only we are given the freedom and a platform to connect, teaching will automatically happen. I'd like to conclude by reading a quote. The quote goes like, there is nothing in a caterpillar that tells you it's going to be a butterfly. No, it's so true. This caterpillar, when it transforms into a butterfly, for that to happen, it has to come out of this cocoon. We as a society should also start viewing these teachers as butterflies. We need to break the cocoon of control for the real teachers to truly emerge. And that's exactly what is going to happen if we can take a step back and empower them. And that's when true teachers, great teachers will emerge. And that's what we as a society really need. Great teachers who are everywhere around us. We just need to let them emerge.